Night gathers, and now my watch begins. It shall not end until my death. I shall take no wife, hold no lands, father no children. I shall wear no crowns and win no glory. I shall live and die for my post. I am the sword in the darkness. I am the watcher on the walls. I am the shield that guards the realms of men. I pledge my life and honor to the night's watch for this night and all the nights to come. Legend tells of a winter that lasted a generation and of a vast and terrible darkness that fell across the land. It came to be known as the long night. In the midst of this darkness, the white walkers emerged from the far north. With their armies of the dead, they waged war against the living, laying waste to villages and holdfasts, leaving terror and destruction in their wake. After years of brutal conflict and unbearable loss, an alliance of the first men and the children of the forest managed to drive the walkers and their minions back into the frigid northern wastelands from whence they came. To prevent another invasion, the first men erected the wall, a massive fortification 700 feet in height, stretching from the Frostfang Mountains in the west to the Bay of Seals in the east. It was a structure unlike any ever built. Indeed, some maintain it could only have been completed with the aid of giants or using the powerful magic of the ancient children of the forest. Men were required to guard and maintain it, and thus the Night's Watch was born. A sworn brotherhood, tasked with defending the realms of men against the dark forces that lay beyond. Upon taking his vows, a brother of the Night's Watch serves for life. It is a life of hardship and great sacrifice, so the oath must not be taken lightly. The punishment for desertion is death. The Night's Watch is divided into three vital branches. The Rangers, the Builders, and the Stewards. While all Black Brothers are expected to take up steel should the need arise, the Rangers are the true warriors of the Watch. Centuries come and gone, and although the White Walkers have yet to return, another threat has emerged. Barbarian tribes known as Wildlings. The Rangers are charged with defending the realm against these lawless savages. The Builders are carpenters, masons, miners and woodsmen, tasked with maintaining the wall as well as its various keeps, towers and structures which have fallen into disrepair over the years. The stewards serve as cooks, butchers and hunters. They tend to the horses and messenger ravens, sew clothing, gather firewood and bring supplies up from the south. The Night's Watch is a diverse group. Proud volunteers from noble houses stand side by side with petty thieves conscripted from dungeons. Class distinctions are left behind, as are past misdeeds. A man gets what he earns on the wall. And even the lowliest gutter snipe can rise up in rank if he proves himself worthy. For thousands of years, the brothers of the Night's Watch have stood their lonely vigil. As the seasons changed, as brutal wars raged in the south, as dynasties rose and fell, the Night's Watch endured. We are the swords in the darkness. We are the watchers on the wall. We are the shields that guard the realms of men. Long ago in the wintry north, 
an army of demons emerged from beneath the icy ground and spread darkness and despair across the land. Astride their monstrous spiders, flanked by giants, they wreaked havoc on the innocent, slaughtering thousands. All hope was lost until the fearless warriors of the first night's watch drove them back into the wintry mountains and built a magic wall to keep them from ever invading again. These stalwart brothers in black continue to protect us even to this day from the evils that lurk in the shadows. An absurd lie. A fairy tale spun by many a wet nurse in the north. To be sure, a giant wall does exist. A triumph of engineering, perhaps, but not of magic. As for the Night's Watch, there may have been a time centuries ago when there was prestige and honor in the miserable monastic life of a black brother. But now, the wall has become a glorified penal colony, full of outcasts, criminals, and assorted ne'er-do-wells. Today, a typical man of the Night's Watch most likely started out a lowly beggar, or a rapist, or a village idiot. As for the few high-born watchmen, they either fought on the losing side of a war, or were disowned by their parents for one reason or another. Those who persist in defending the Night's Watch will claim the Seven Kingdoms need protection from the wildling tribes of the far north. But there's little to fear from those primitives. They're a nuisance, but not sophisticated or powerful enough to be a significant threat to the realm. And any talk of white walkers returning with their armies of the dead and their giant spiders and their snarks is just that. Talk. A long time ago, they say, some old southern king enslaved our giants by magic and forced them to build your famous wall. Then he kicked all of my kind to the other side and raised an army to keep us there. And we're the uncivilized ones, wildlings. Might be Sir King was wise. Even a giant can be made to kneel, but only if he wants a better crack at your head. The Free Folk don't follow a man because his father tells us. If the King's son was brave and strong, aye, we'd follow him as we did his father. If he wasn't... But it seems to me, as much as the wall keeps us out, it keeps you Southerners in. You follow laws you didn't make. Kneel to kings you didn't choose, and pray to gods you never hear from. Our traders talk about your seven. Beyond the wall, the stars shine bright and clear. Many gods there aren't listening to the likes of men. Our gods are of the forest, in the trees that shelter us and the rivers that feed us. They gave the land for all of us to share. We fish, farm, and hunt where we will, when we need. If a man wants a woman, he has to prove he'll give her strong and cunning sons. Oh, it's easy. When she tries to slit his throat, he don't let her. With the Free Folk, you get what you can take, and you keep what you can hold. No more. I wonder. Even if my kind didn't hop over your wall, would he still set your night's watch to guard it? You southerners are rich. You always have more steel, gold, and daughters. I think you're afraid. If you've always knelt, you don't know what freedom is. And if you've not been beyond the wall, you don't know what fear is. You will. Joining the Night's Watch or taking the Black is a singular honor for any Northerner. For it was in the North, some 8,000 years ago, that the first man drove back the White Walkers, erected the wall, and established the Sworn Brotherhood 
that would guard the realm and its people from the dangers beyond. Regrettably, the Night's Watch no longer commands the widespread respect and admiration it once did. While House Stark and other houses in the northern regions continue to recognize its vital importance to the safety and stability of the realm, this view is not shared by the powerful houses of the southern kingdoms or their subjects. Most regard the Watch as a misguided, obsolete order made up of useless outcasts. Admittedly, the current Night's Watch is a shadow of its former glory. Their numbers have dwindled to less than a thousand. Of the 19 castles along the wall, only three are functional. The Shadow Tower, Castle Black, and East Watch by the Sea. And the Watch's mandate of adding to the wall has been abandoned entirely. There are barely enough resources to maintain it. Recruiting officers, known as Wandering Crows, scour the dungeons and slums of the realm in hope of finding men to fill the ranks. While there is still the occasional high-born volunteer, the newest recruits are almost entirely made up of lowly criminals, thieves, rapists, and murderers, sentenced to the wall as punishment for their crimes. The decline of this once fabled order is troubling, as the danger it guards against is all too real. While the White Walkers haven't been seen or heard from in ages, and may very well be the stuff of myth, Barbarian tribes that dwell beyond the wall, known as wildlings, have been a menace to the North and its people for generations. At certain points in history, the disparate wildling tribes have united behind a single leader, a king beyond the wall, and attempted large-scale attacks against the realm. But thanks to the resourceful and courageous men of the Night's Watch, these so-called kings were soundly defeated. While many have lost faith in the Night's Watch, the people of the North are steadfast in their belief that the Black Brothers will answer the call of duty. But with winter coming, diminished numbers, and a lack of widespread support, will they be ready? Swords in the darkness. Aye. The Black Brothers of the Night's Watch are that, at least. As too many of the Free Folk know. You Southerners are strange. A man murders, and you train him to kill better. A man thieves or rapes, and you send him where it's dark and private. Well, at least you make him promise to be good. Well, then you make him regret even that. From the time he's woken to the time he's allowed to sleep. He walks the frozen wall, carries frozen stones or boils frozen food. When he lies down at night, he can't have nobody to warm his frozen bed. Well, not unless the crows like to nest together. You think he remembers the stories they told him then? About when the White Walkers woke in the land of always winter, and how the wall and the night's watch were raised to stop them the next time. Never mind trapping us on the other side. We free folk have our stories too. About how one of your king crows found something cold in the woods with bright blue eyes. How he brought her home through your wall and declared himself Night's King. For 13 years, he and his queen ruled over his brothers, making sacrifices as black as their cloaks. Lucky for you, Southerners, the Free Folk rallied to a king beyond the wall, as we will when need be, and marched on the ancient castle he'd taken for his own, the Night Fort. With the help of the Starks, we killed the demon and cleansed your precious watch. And then they thanked us and kicked us back across the wall, as you always have. Gandalf, Raymond Redbeard, the Horned Lord, each chosen as a king beyond the wall, each promising victory. And all falling to the Night's Watch and the Starks. But this time is different. Our new king knows your tricks. You called him a brother crow once, but he never forgot his wings. We know how you think. We know where you're weak. 
Watch for us from your wall, if you like. With the cold, you won't even feel the blade slip into your back. Nobody really knows how the wall was built. Yes, every child hears how, in the days of the First Men, Brandon the Builder raised the wall with magic and giants and set the Night's Watch to guard it. But nobody thought to write down the story until thousands of years later, and the Septons who did it weren't much for accuracy. I mean, they have knights bumbling around thousands of years before they were knights. Sorry, bad habit. But even if magic and giants built the wall, it's the Night's Watch who have held it. Our order of builders repairs the keeps and towers, digs tunnels, crushes stone for roads and footpaths, and clears away trees wherever the forest presses too close to the wall. Or at least they would, if they had the men, and the tools, and the time. Long ago, when the Night's Watch was at full strength, the builders would quarry blocks of ice from the frozen lakes of the haunted forest, dragging them south on sledges to add to the wall. Now, it's all they can do to watch for cracks or signs of melt and make what repairs they can, without men, or tools, or time. The Order of Rangers is the fighting heart of the Night's Watch. They ride beyond the wall, fighting and trading with wildlings, surviving shadow cats and snow leopards. The Rangers are meant to scout out threats to the wall and return to report. And they did, back in the days when men could go north and come back alive. Now they just come back. The Order of Stewards keeps the Watch alive. We hunt and farm, tend the horses, milk the cows, gather firewood, cook the meals and bring supplies from the south. Not so heroic, I know, but since the Night's Watch doesn't starve or freeze, I guess we're the only order that still does everything it's supposed to. Without all of us guarding the wall together, well, it probably still wouldn't have ever fallen. Solid ice rising hundreds of feet into the air and running hundreds of miles to the sea, no army is smashing it anytime soon, which is why our enemies have never tried. Well, not directly. The brothers Gendel and Gorn, kings beyond the wall, went under the wall through ancient caves buried deep in the earth. But on the way back, they took a wrong turn and were lost in the darkness. People say that their children's children's children are still down there, looking for a way up, or for more food to find its way down. When our rangers found Ars and Isaac picking away at the wall, he was almost halfway through. The rangers decided not to disturb him and sealed the way behind him with ice and stone and snow. Some say, if you press your ear flat to the wall, you can still hear Arson chipping away with his axe. A hundred years ago, another king beyond the wall, Raymond Redbeard, realized the wall's size is both its greatest strength and its greatest weakness. He waited for our patrols to pass and then sent climbers to the now unguarded stretch of the wall. When they reached the top, they dropped ropes and ladders for thousands more wildlings to clamber up. The Night's Watch didn't even know his army had crossed until after the Starks and Umbers had cornered and destroyed him. And that was a hundred years ago, when the Watch had many more men than now. Lucky for the Night's Watch, the wall isn't without its own defences. Besides being incredibly tall and thick, the wall is also treacherous. Many times a patrol will find the broken corpses of wildlings who've tried to climb the wall, only for a piece of it to break off mid-climb, or to have their hold slip as the sun melted the ice just enough. When the light strikes the wall just right, it can even look like it's weeping. A thousand years ago, the Night's Watch could have lined up shoulder to shoulder along the wall, all the way from East Watch by the Sea to the Shadow Tower, to meet Mance Raider and his army. But now, Mance isn't bothering to find tunnels under the wall or climb over it. He was a sworn brother once. He knows that the glory of the Night's Watch is behind us. Mance is going to try what no man ever has. He's going to come through the wall. One day, I hope Maesters write stories about how we beat him back. Because if we don't, there may not be any more stories to write. Wild lynx. I suppose that's flattery coming from your southerners to kneel to a pig if your daddy did. We call ourselves the Free Folk. Or at least, most of us won't kill you for calling us so. Some will, aye. But that's just the way of it in the true north. Beyond your great white wall where your laws and kingdoms end, and men live free and die cold. For we live close to our land, and she's a terrible wife. Fail to obey her, and she kills you. On the frozen shore, so deep is the snow that men ride chariots made of walrus bones pulled by packs of dogs. 
The Hornfords have it easier in the mountains. The cold so hardens and blackens the soles of their feet that they don't even need boots. The cave people spend their lives in the dark, doing gods know what with gods know who or what. The Thens have one of the only nice bits of land up here. A valley in the far north, near the end of the frost fangs, with game, copper, and tin for shiny bronze weapons. Better than the rusted old blades most of us have. With such advantages, they could be a generous, friendly race. They're not. As young boys, they burn their faces and rub ash and dirt into their wounds. Scars more than their face, I think. They follow their Magnar, who's the kind of man who can rule these kinds of men. I know what you southerners are thinking, and no, the Magnar is not a king, more like their god, though not one you'd care to follow if you don't sleep with your eyes open. And then there are the giants, a proud race as old as the Frostfangs and about as tough. They speak the old tongue, when they speak at all, though they understand more common than they let on. They're not the monsters you southerners think. Once I was caught in a winter storm so cold, I knew it freeze to death before it broke. Lucky for me, I stumbled on a sleeping giant, cut open her belly, and crawled right up inside her. Kept me warm enough, but the stink nearly done me. The worst thing was, when she woke up, she took me for her babe. Suckled me for three whole moons before I could get away. Hehe. <laughs> Aye, but there's times I still miss the taste of giant's milk. I thank the gods she was in a good mood and lacked a husband. An angry giant, you want no part of that. Whatever our differences, one thing unites us. When we look south, we see hundreds of feet of ice piled high manned by shivering crows in black cloaks. Our wardens penning us up here, warning us away from warmer lands, softer beds, and prettier girls. But the cold winds are rising. The Hornfords couldn't stand against them, nor the Thens, nor the Giants. First, they kill you. Then they send your dead against you. We faced extinction, every one of us. But then man's raider came to us and rallied every nation of the free folk as no man ever has. He was a crow once and knows your ways. For thousands of years, we've sucked fear of your kind from our mother's teeth. We've been on one side of the wall and you on the other. No more. One of these nights, you're going to hear a knock on your front door. You best not answer. Each brother of the Night's Watch swears a sacred oath to protect the realms of men. That doesn't mean pissing about, waiting for the cold to finally put an end to you. It means bleeding. It means fighting. It means going beyond the wall and hunting down those who mean harm to the realm. So how do you get a thousand rapists and thieves to fight together, to bleed together, that's the burden of the Lord Commander. He keeps the builders building, the rangers ranging, and the stewards stewarding, or else it all falls apart. Each Lord Commander is chosen from and by his fellow brothers, and he serves for life. A long time ago, you may have had men from Queensgate and Long Barrow, and the other 16 castles of the wall come to Castle Black for an election. These days, you'd be lucky to scrape a few dozen from Eastwatch and the Shadow Tower, or however many they can spare who cast votes in their stead. All the same, the brothers are allowed to name whomever they think worthy of the title. Then we vote until one man receives a majority, however long it takes. Some elections have lasted less than an hour. Some have lasted weeks. One even lasted two years. Maester Eamon has said there have been 997 Lord Commanders since the Night's Watch was founded. Back then we had true soldiers, men of honor and strength. Now look who mans the wall. Bastards, 
peasants who stole a sheep to bugger, and fat little nobles who weren't worthy of their Lord Father's land. But the Lord Commander must find a place for them all, and turn these walking piles of horse dung into soldiers of the Night's Watch. Though we haven't always been so lucky to have such men to lead us, we've had cowards and fools as well, our tyrants and our madmen. Runcel Hightower tried to bequeath the watch to his bastard. Roderick Flint thought to make himself king beyond the wall. Tristan Mudd, Mad Mark Rankenfell, Robin Hill, each nearly destroyed us with their foolishness. 600 years ago, the commanders at Snowgate and the Nightfort even went to war against each other. The simpering Lord Commander asked them politely to lay aside their quarrel, and incredibly they did because they joined forces to murder him. The Stark in Winterfell had to intervene and take both their heads to save the Night's Watch. Now we've got more mouths than we can feed. A southern king in our castle and cells full of wildlings and no Lord Commander, since the last was betrayed by his own men. We need a new leader a man respected enough to hold the watch together in this dark hour. A leader strong enough to make sure that the Night's Watch survives the coming winter, no matter the cost. <laughs>